Hi, this is Theo from PuckerBlocks.com. Today I'm going to show you a watercolor technique called the variegated wash. This allows you to have two colors in a wash. For example, if you take a look here, there is burnt sienna, there is also ultramarine, and the two colors are not mixed completely, so you get to see the individual colors. So this is going to be a short tutorial. Let's get started. I've already drawn two sketches here, so for this side here, I'm going to paint it um, with the watercolors mixed completely in the palette. And for this side, I'm going to let the watercolor mix on the paper. So um, let's get started. The colors I'm using today is from this set with Daniel Smith colors. I will be painting the roof with orange and red and this shadow area here with French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. Let me mix the orange and red first. So before I start, I like to put down drops of water onto the pen so that they get softened up. That way it's easier for me to create washes. So let's start with this new Gamboge and Queen of Corridon Red. So I'm just going to mix it very completely here, in this area here. Alright, then just apply it like this. Alright, you can see that this is a very flat wash. Now I'm going to do the same thing for this side here, but I'm going to use the variegated wash. So um, let's see. So while the wash is still wet, um, this wash by the way is has a lot of water. So while the wash is still wet, I'm going to pick up some pigment straight from the pan and just um, put it like that. So I'm just going to mix it a bit, maybe add a bit more water to let it flow better. I also want to maybe tilt this canvas up by putting something below so that the water can flow down. Now let me just continue to this side here. Maybe this side here I want to add some red color so I can pick up some intense pigment from here. Remember just now I dropped a few drops of water here. So those paint are very intense. I'll just pick them straight up from the pan and use it onto the paper. Alright, so I'll wait for this to dry later on and see how it looks like. Now I want to mix the shadow area for this building. Same thing, I want to put the mixture here first. I'm gonna mix it completely on the palette first. So French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna, it will give you a nice a gray tone. So you can see this is a very dark, a very dark gray. And French Ultramarine is granulating, it's a granulating paint so you see a very nice texture. I think some of the paint is starting to go up because the roof has not dried yet. So let me try and prop this thing up again to prevent it from flowing up. Now for this area here, I will prepare a bit more mixture. I will use French Ultramarine again. So you see here that there is more French Ultramarine. So I will just go in Carefully, you can still see the blue. And I'll mix some burnt sienna from here, the intense mix from here. You might find it easier to mix the um, colors separately. For example, you put French ultramarine here and burnt sienna here, and you can mix them uh, rather easily as compared to me picking out from the pan of the picking up the pigment from the pan straight away from here.
burnt sienna and ultramarine same thing for this area here let me pick up a bit more ultramarine all right now for the background of the house maybe i will just add some viridian or thalo green mixed with queen of Crichton red you can still see the two individual colors and now for the other side i'm just going to mix it completely now that this has dry let's take a look now on the left side for me i think it's a bit plain because the orange is mixed completely you just see one um, shade of color orange gray and uh, very dull green for the background but on the right side here you can see different colors in the same shape so that is a bit more interesting in this uh, roof shape here you get to see orange you get to see the red you get to see them blend together so this is called the variegated wash same thing for this shadow area you see the ultramarine you see the burnt sienna let me zoom in closer for you what's interesting about variegated wash is you get to see the individual colors that are used to create the mix for example when you take a look at this shape here you know that there are two colors involved in mixing so this is a burnt sienna french ultramarine and when you look at the background here you also see two colors the thalo green and some sort of a red color but when you take a look at this side here this is so plain this is just an orange it's like um orange from the tube and this is just a gray tone so when you compare this one and this one obviously this is a bit more interesting and more lively let's take a look at an example where i use this technique for a sketch so here you can see um, the roof here with orange mixed with red but i did not mix the colors completely on the palette i let it mix on the paper itself so you get to see the red blend into the orange it's very nice and here at the bottom i use thalo blue with some queen of Crichton red and some yellow but i did not mix the wash completely on the palette again i let it mix on the paper itself so this is a very slight wash same thing here here i use mostly um, new gum wash but towards the left side i actually diluted the new gum wash a bit so this is a gradated wash from concentrated pigment to uh, more water added when you look at this sketch as a whole there is a big orange area here and the orange and red area here and in the middle is the gray tone area if you were to just use a flat wash for example if you were to use this flat orange here to color or the rooftops is going to appear a bit boring so with the variegated wash you get to see some areas that are more interesting some areas are have a more intense concentration of pigment like this area here this area here and it fades off to the lighter areas and this adds variety and this makes your sketch visually more interesting same thing for the rooftops here if i were to just use orange it's it's going to appear flat but if you use a variegated wash it's going to appear more interesting and this also allows your audience the person who's looking at your sketch to linger a bit longer to check out the colors that you use to mix the wash this is not a difficult technique to use and this is also one of the highlights of watercolor you do not get this sort of unpredictability with other paint mediums like oil acrylates because watercolor flows are so fluidly you get this uh, very nice gradation very nice transition so this is something you can try out to make your sketches more lively i think it works best with um, larger areas larger shapes like this so for larger shapes you can introduce additional colors to make it more um, lively more exciting i think that's all for my video tutorial today if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comment section below i will also post some uh, links to my scan image and also some examples where you can get to see more examples of variegated wash 
thanks for watching see you in the next video remember to subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't done so for more sketching tips tutorials art product reviews bye